should note to our viewers, we did get one a decision from the Supreme Court, very important one, and Ellie, you can comment yeah. on that one as well. The Supreme Court said the White House and federal agencies, such as the FBI, may continue to urge social media platforms to take down content the government use as misinformation. This is viewed as a, uh, a victory for the Biden administration, a yeah. technical, if not an important one. Yeah, so what do you think? Let me talk about this case yeah. that just came down, the first one today. So. You may remember about a year or so ago, a group of Republican state attorneys general and a group of internet users, social media users, sued the Biden administration. They said, you are violating the First Amendment when you were during COVID, primarily during COVID, but other issues too, when you were reaching out to social media companies saying, you need to take this post down, you need to moderate this post. And the question was, does that violate the First Amendment? The Supreme Court has now found by a six to three ruling, not your usual, it's actually a cross ideological majority that the people who sued do not have standing, meaning state mm. AGs and people who may use Twitter or Facebook, you don't have enough of an injury from this to even bring the lawsuit. So they didn't even reach the First Amendment question, the First Amendment merits. The Supreme Court just said six to three, you're out of luck, this lawsuit's no good, go back to the drawing board. Is that so, kind of taking a pass on deciding yeah, some uh, of the more key constitutional issues It's there? a procedural, off ramp, but it matters. I mean, standing matters in our courts. You can't just bring a lawsuit because something bothers you or offends you. You have to be able to show some tangible injury. And just to remind our viewers, we saw the Mifepristone, the abortion medication uh, decision last week, I think it was, was also based on a lack of standing. So Supreme Court yeah. likes to take these off ramps if they're there, especially when they get into messy issues. But for now, there's no First Amendment violation in what the Biden administration did. And Jamie, I mean, this is also interesting as it pertains to the uh, upcoming, well, the, the, the election campaign that we're in the middle of right now. The decision means that the Department of Homeland Security may continue to flag posts to social media companies such as Facebook and X that it believes may be the work of foreign disinformation agents seeking to disrupt this year's presidential race. So two things. One, I think a lot of parents are not so unhappy <laughs> with, <laughs> with, this, uh, with this ruling. But these are the kinds of things it will be interesting to see in our debate tomorrow night, whether Trump or Biden bring this up. But no question, issues like this are going to have uh, play out during the campaign. Uh, at, at the ballot box. A another decision we're waiting for is the Idaho abortion case, a reproductive rights case. I, I don't know that we're going to get that one today, but these are all things that have more significance during the campaign. Yeah, Laura Coates, I mean, the Idaho abortion decision, yeah. when that comes down, could have massive implications across the country. It could. And yeah. this is a case where the court is trying to grapple with the idea that there are certain states that have abortion bans. But in those particular states, are you still able as a medical provider to provide an emergency abortion? This is going to be the crux of the issue. And while they're trying to balance this, there's a whole lot of political implications of this very notion. You're talking about state level regulations compared to the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the Dobbs decision. We're at the two year anniversary since just Monday. You have a presidential debate that is undoubtedly going to talk about reproductive rights more broadly. And this idea of what this tension would be between the medical community's obligations and what the statute is requiring to do highlights a big tension of the Supreme Court. Do they want to be wading into otherwise normally political matters? This is becoming increasingly so. It's not just a matter of rights at this point in time. They're being viewed through the lens of politics. But this will be a very consequential decision. And mind you, this is now the second case they'd be mm. deciding since overturning Roe v. Wade in this very term. Their first one was involving the first um, drug in a two-drug regimen, Mifepristone for medication abortions, a widely used dr drug for that purpose. And so this tells you a lot about the decision that they have made in the past that was not fulsome and comprehensive to anticipate and resolve these very matters. Yeah, the, the Dobbs decision, I mean, had huge, I mean, repercussions across yeah. the country in ways that maybe even the Supreme Court justices did not imagine, uh, Jamie Gangel and, and Ellie Honig. I mean, we're seeing that now. Yeah, and yeah. what's really at stake with the abortion issue? I mean, we're talking about emergency room care. At what level do doctors have to provide that care? The federal regulations say if the mother's life is in danger or if it's necessary to stabilize the mother's health condition. Idaho and other states say only if the mother's life is in danger. There's a huge, I mean, it's literally a life or death difference there. Yeah, it, it, it's go ahead. It's not only life or death, but, but think about some complications that are separated. Um, there could be a complication where a mother could not get put, you know, a family could not have another child. People come, there are so many other medical, serious medical complications that 
this cuts off because it's only if the mother's life is in danger. And that's such an important point she raises on the politics and the debate will undoubtedly raise this point. The conversation around reproductive rights and the conversation around abortion access has shifted away from the stereotypical notions of who people want to create a narrative of who seeking abortions and then the idea of those who are still wanting to have children and are are desperate to do so but are unable in this particular pregnancy that has shifted the politics of this in a, in a in a way that I think was probably not anticipated politically by a number of people we remember hearing on our own airways when um, you know you had different congressmen saying well hold on is the Republican Party going to be known as anti IVF as anti family right. planning as anti different aspects of it so be sure to look for these conversations coming up about reproductive rights more broadly. Yeah, I mean, it's raised all of these issues, and now you're seeing it play out in the states. I mean, people are worried about whether IVF is going to mm -hmm. continue to be a legal option for families who want to have kids. And Evan Perez is standing by as well. Evan, I want to go to you and uh, get your reaction uh, to what we're learning so far today. Well, Jim, I think, look, the, the, the social media case, the, the, the case that the, the justices just ruled on 6-3 uh, on a pretty technical way, uh, I think has really, really large implications uh, for this election year. One of the things uh, that happened over the last couple of years, certainly with Republicans claiming that there was censorship uh, and, and claiming that it was all uh, because of the government, uh, w you know, you saw some reluctance on the part of the FBI and some of the uh, national security uh, agencies of the United States uh, trying to interact with social media companies to point out where they saw uh, examples of foreign entities, foreign governments trying to influence uh, the U.S. electorate with uh, this information. Uh, there, was, there was a whole pushback on that whole effort, which, of course, you know, came about because uh, the Russian government and the Russian intelligence services interfered in the 2016 uh, election and in the 2020 election. So uh, the fact that the justices have essentially, by, by throwing this lawsuit back, uh, and, 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 and essentially saying that this was uh, these uh, this state attorneys general from Missouri and Louisiana had no uh, standing to, to bring this lawsuit. I think what it does is it certainly allows the FBI to continue its work, which is a very important part of protecting this country, protecting voters from some of the activities of foreign intelligence services that are going to be very active over the next few months. So uh, I think what you're going to hear over the next few days, and certainly you heard it this morning from some of the uh, surrogates of the former president, they're claiming that there's this huge era of, of, of censorship that right. has fallen over the country, which is you know, just not true. Uh, but what this ruling does today is it certainly frees up and allows uh, the FBI to do its work that where they spot interference from foreign entities and foreign countries, uh, they can call the social media companies, point it out to them, and those social media companies can make a decision, a business decision that they can make on whether to remove certain uh, posts on their, on their platforms, Jim. Right, and, and for the younger viewers who were a little young back in 2016, I mean, the bipartisan <laughs> Senate Intelligence Committee report right. that came out on the 2016 election concluded that the Russians were trying to influence the outcome of the 2016 election. They were, they were trying was, to help Donald Trump. That's what that is exactly right. That is exactly right. right. And, and if we're going to have any kind of uh, effort to combat disinformation in this country, I mean, you, you have to have uh, this kind of situation where, you know, the United States government and other interested parties, obviously, um, can go to these social media platforms and say, hey, you've got a lot of, you know, Russian disinformation garbage out there. You might want to take that down. It could hurt the country. <laughs> right, and yeah. Jim, let me just say real quick, yeah. um, you know, one of the things that has happened over the last couple of years is a sort of a, a redefinition of what censorship is. I mean, if you look at the law, obviously, censorship comes from the government, right? And one of the things that you see in this ruling here is that, you know, we're talking about uh, social media companies essentially being responsible for managing their platforms. It's a business decision, and it's their platforms. And when the FBI says, hey, we think this might be Russian disinformation, uh, that doesn't mean it's government censorship. And, uh, you know, I think what, what, what I think this, this ruling helps is for us to sort of refocus on that aspect of how we protect the country and protect voters from that interference.